Linus Tech Tips coverage of CES 2014 is brought to you by NCIX.com, your source for great technology, selection, and service, along with Corsair Memory and Western Digital. Welcome to the Corning booth, where we are going to be having my lovely assistant show me just how dirty my phone is. With is it Sorry, is it a TPA meter? ATP meter, all right. So basically what this does is it looks for any kind of organic material on the surface of the glass of my phone and tells me not necessarily how much of it is dead or alive, but simply how much there is. And I mean, at a show like Vegas, it's probably safe to say that some of it's alive and some of it is going to get me sick because I can already feel a cold coming on anyway. So I'll let you go ahead and start swabbing the phone while we talk a little bit about the technology that is in Corning's Gorilla Glass with antimicrobial agent. Now this watch right here in the top left has a regular soda lime glass which is an inexpensive alternative to Gorilla Glass. Then in the bottom left we see what happens to that glass if you add as much antimicrobial agent as they did to their own glass. It turns yellow which is undesirable from pretty much any perspective. In the middle we've got Corning and Gorilla Glass at the top for reference and then at the bottom with an antimicrobial film. Now this might be effective but unfortunately it gives a very hazy appearance to whatever's behind it. In the top right we've got regular, well not regular, it's awesome, regular Corning Gorilla Glass again and then in the bottom we've got that same glass with their antimicrobial agent and it is just as transparent and strong and flexible and all those great things as before. So something a lot of people don't think about, so we're just having the, the test completed over here, is that is that their phone touches not only their hands but also their face and all kinds of crazy things. You lend it to someone so it can be a um, well, I guess we'll find out. Basically, that chart behind us is a summary of the people here at the show who have had their phones tested here at the booth. So they've, we've had levels of ATP as low as kind of 11 to 30 and levels as high as apparently one lady licked her phone and got a reading over 2,000. Not something Corning or really anyone recommends, but there you have it, guys. That's how, uh, that's how some people uh, want to be about it. So here we go, guys. Let's find out just how dirty my phone is. The ATP, once the ATP meter finishes booting up, guys, we're not going to cut this because we want you to know that, you know, this is, you know, how, how dirty or not dirty I happen to be. In the meantime, let's talk about what the antimicrobial agent actually does. So we had to cut this here, guys, because we've got to be very careful what we say. This is the world's first EPA-approved antimicrobial glass, but that, you know, we, there are certain words we can't use. But what we can say is you can be comforted to know that over the duration of the lifetime of your device, whether you have a high reading or a low reading, you can be comforted to know that the antimicrobial agent is always working. Thunderbolt 2, my friends, available on the Mac Pro, actually available on some PC stuff as well, is a very, very versatile standard. Now, it's 20 gigabit per second, which means you can connect all kinds of great stuff, including, uh, you know, uh, high definition or even greater than high definition cameras, uh, capture devices, external PCI Express enclosures, and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. But one of the limitations of Thunderbolt right now is that particularly with the copper cables available on the market, distance is a problem. So if you're setting up something like a little Mac Pro Studio workspace, the three meter maximum distance you can be away from the back of the PC with a copper cable might not be enough to have an efficient workplace. So Corning, with their expertise when it comes to materials, is releasing optical Thunderbolt cables that are capable of much, much thinner form factors as well as much longer distances. They have a 10 meter cable now. There's a 30 meter cable coming very soon. That's correct. Okay. And then they're going to have up to a 60 meter cable coming later this year. Now, you probably know, you know, or you've heard somewhere that optimal optical cables can be very fragile. Don't worry about that, guys. They've got a demo here where they're taking their optical cable, jamming it into tiny little holes, tying it into knots. They've got a laser pointer on the one end, and you can see that on a, aside from the optical signal still passing through, there is no leakage at any of those knots, so it has still maintained its integrity. If it gets closed in a drawer, closed in a door, closed in a Okay, I'm, I'm not going to say any other words that rhyme with that. The point is that it will maintain its data integrity pretty much regardless of what happens to it. But that's not all, guys. Thunderbolt needs longer distance and thinner cables, but so does USB 3. Now, to be clear, this right here is not Corning's product, okay? This is actually a copper-based active USB 3 extension cable. It's a 15-meter cable. It's extremely heavy, made of copper, and also very bulky. 
For comparison, my friends, this is Corning's USB 3 compatible. To be clear, guys, the USB 3 standard doesn't include anything about optical cables. So they were kind of like, well, okay, we're a big company. We can like engineer a solution here, even though it's not in the spec. So Corning is releasing their optical USB 3 compatible cables in lengths up to 50 meters. And we can be expecting those later on in the year. You can see they're obviously thinner, obviously lighter, and of course, they're optical. So performance is going to be obvious obviously better. Thank you. Well, okay, to be clear, guys, it'll still be 5 gigabit per second or 10 gigabit per second or whatever USB 3 ends up becoming, but better in terms of, you know, not having signal degradation over length, which is why the copper one is so bulky. There. There, I clarified that. Anyway, guys, don't miss any of our CES 2014 coverage. Our trip to the show this year is powered by NCIX.com, your source for great technology, selection and service, as well as Corsair Memory and Western Digital. A huge thanks to those guys, because without them, we wouldn't be able to be here.